the shoulder is composed of two force couples. What is the definition of force couple we're going to talk about right now? But in an overhead throwing athlete, it is absolutely essential that we reestablish rotation movement patterns. Again, which are also related to these other complex motions of overhead and reaching behind. So when we look at a force couple, it's defined, right, as two forces moving in opposite directions that create a nonlinear movement, which is referred to as rotation. Best example of it is sit in a tube in a pool and you move one hand this way and the other hand this way in the water. You do this and what do you do? You rotate and spin around in the water. You don't go anywhere, right? This is a force couple, and that's what the shoulder has, two force couples. And you can see on your screen there is there's a perfect example of the force couple of the scapula. Uh, it is not a synovial joint. It's a sesamoid that rotates, you know, basically is a, it's had with a bunch of muscles attached to it, essentially. And it just floats around the ribs. And you can see, look at all those forces of the uh, muscles around the scapula that are firing sequentially, right? Some turn on, some turn off. Some are acting concentrically, some eccentrically. Some are doing isometric contractions. This is the complexity of the shoulder. How do we train someone to shut off the upper traps and turn on the lower traps? How do we teach someone during an activity that the subscapularis needs to function? We don't. We have to just rehab those dysfunctions. And the miraculous thing about the body is it takes over and reestablishes. Years ago, this was called the scapulohumeral rhythm. What does that mean? You put it to music? No. This is a complex movement pattern that involves these force couples. If we understand this, it makes it a lot simpler, believe me, to treat the shoulder. 